Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, for those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at uh, Tweak Town, uh, the U.S. Army is investing in a Linux-powered, Wi-Fi-capable smart rifle. Um, it's a precision-guided, Wi-Fi-capable, Linux-powered smart rifle. The tracking point, it's called the Tracking Point, or sorry, Tracking Point Innovations has announced that the U.S. military purchased six of its smart rifles, and I'm using air quotes here, uh, which are priced at between $10,000 and $27,000 each. The smart rifles feature technology so advanced that the initial investment should pay for itself over and over again in the future. A soldier equipped with a smart rifle would simply need to tag a target viewable on a screen, which is found on the gun's scope. The internal computer will then tell the shooter exactly how to hold the gun and when to press the trigger. So, kind of interesting. Uh, you know, it's amazing how much the uh, military is using uh, technology uh, particularly open source technology that the private sector has kind of, you know, act, uh, you know, morphed into something it can use itself. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. From uh, openpr.com, Red Hat updates Red Hat Academy brings Red Hat OpenStack cloud technology education to secondary and higher ed students. Um, from Dubai, the United Emirates, Red Hat, the world's leading provider of open source solutions today, announced updates to Red Hat Academy, the company's open source education program that offers turnkey curriculum materials for educational programs in global secondary and higher education institutions. Red Hat has expanded Red Hat Academy to include content on Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, OpenStack platform and Red Hat JBoss middleware, making Red Hat Academy the first program of its kind to offer an organized OpenStack offering, including a curriculum for instructors, textbooks, and labs to high school and higher educational institutions. So, pretty interesting. Uh, definitely give it a check. From Tweak Town again, Ubuntu Linux is the most secure end user OS. According to researchers, Ubuntu Linux, the most popular Linux distribution out there, according to uh, security researchers, is also the most secure for end users. Um, this research was done by the Communications Electronic Security Group, otherwise known as the C, the SEG, KEG, KESG, I don't know how to pronounce it, CESG. Uh, the CESG is part of the British Government Communications Headquarters, which is the GCHQ. And while none of the OS's is, OS's is completely secure, Ubuntu Linux 12.04 was rated among the highest. So pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. I'm a huge Ubuntu fan. Ubuntu is based off of Debian. I've always been uh, uh, a Debian fan. Um, you know, Debian is just one of those OSs that a lot of other operating systems are based off of. Um, you know, in Debian, if you go to their website, they they very much tout themselves as the universal operating system. You can even get Debian with a free BSD kernel, which is kind of cool. Uh, you know, uh, my home computer behind this door here, you can't really see it behind there. One of these days I might open it, but I actually have a home server in there that runs FreeBSD, and I could very easily see swapping that all out, still running the FreeBSD kernel, but running, you know, Debian on top of that. So, should be pretty interesting nonetheless. From telecompaper.com, the SUSE Enterprise Linux server available is now available in Amazon Web Services GovCloud. Amazon Web Services has announced that SUSE Enterprise Linux server is now available 
and AWS Glove, GovCloud, the Amazon Web Services, and SUSE have collaborated to offer SUSE Linux Enterprise Server on Amazon EC2 and Enterprise Class Computing Environment for running business critical applications and workloads. SUSE maintains the base SLES images for Amazon EC2. Uh, Amazon Web Services customers receive updates at the same time that updates are made available from SUSE. So the, Gov, the GovCloud is an isolated AWS region designed to allow U.S. government agencies, contractors, and customers with regulatory needs to move more sensitive workloads into the cloud. So pretty interesting. Definitely try it out if that is your need. Uh, the next two stories that we have are Raspberry Pi stories. I thought I would include them here simply because uh, I'm a huge Raspberry Pi fan. Uh, the first story is from Network World in the Linux Tycoon blog. The, it's entitled, This Raspberry Pi Tablet is Absolutely Gorgeous. I could not agree more. One of the things that I most love about the Linux community is that do-it-yourself spirit that attitude that says, if it doesn't exist, make it yourself. Or oftentimes, even if it does exist, make it something similar. Make something similar yourself just because you can. When I first caught wind of the Raspberry Pi, which seems like decades ago now, according to the author, uh, my imagination went wild. A tiny, low-power, ARM-based computer that I could load Linux on and do whatever I want with? The possibilities were almost endless. So uh, anyway, he continues on. This is essentially... Uh, the story is, is essentially about, you know, Raspberry Pi, uh, using it as, as a, for a tablet computer. Um, pretty neat. Definitely check this out. Uh, I thought it was cool and thought I'd share it with you guys. From ZDNet, Raspberry Pi, 11 reasons why it is the perfect small server. That's right. The perfect small server. Uh, he says, uh, this is a story by Chris Clay in the Open Source Revolution blog. Recently, I've been experimenting with Raspberry Pi Revision B running different GNU Linux distributions. Since the Pi is basically a mini computer, I decided to take it for a spin and see what I could throw at it. And I have been pleasantly surprised. In fact, it's been so successful that I've decided to try setting it up as a mini server with various services. In doing so, I've come up with a list of advantages that I feel are very compelling. Number one, power consumption. That's right. It's very low power, five to seven watts of electricity. Two, there are no moving parts. It runs so cool, it doesn't even have a fan, which is very nice. Three, very small form factor. Four, no noise. Five, status lights. There are several status lights on the Pi's motherboard. With a clear case, you can see NIC activity, disk IO, power, status, etc. Number six, expansion capabilities. Number seven, HDMI, shall I say more? You can hook this thing up to a TV. Uh, it's affordable. Uh, for number eight, nine, huge community support. 10, you can overclock it. And 11, you can use it for lots of things. So pretty cool, definitely check it out. The next story uh, is from PC Magazine by uh, John C. Dvorak. Now this is, uh, we don't generally link to John C. Dvorak stories, uh, but I thought this was pretty neat. He has a post here titled, The Remarkable Intel NUC. And when I say NUC, I mean N-U-C, as in the new unit of computing. This is a very small form factor, uh, Intel-based uh, system and he is running Linux on it. You can run, you know, it's basically an Intel x86 system. You can run various incarnations of Linux on it. Really inexpensive, lots of power for what you're getting. Definitely check this out if you're looking uh, to do something cool with it. That will do it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.